Voila. Are you working? Good morning, you nerds. School today is in session. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. I am Dr. Shireen Idris. Who the heck am I? I'm still figuring it out, although I'm nearly 40 years old. I am a cosmetic dermatologist based in the city of dreams. So what are we talking about today? Today we are gonna to talk about an ingredient that I am extremely excited about as my hum husband slams the keys. <sighs> He's not the ingredient that I'm extremely excited about, although he excites me in other ways. I am talking about <laughs> one of my most favorite skincare ingredients, one that I hold near and dear to my heart, the true underdog of the cosmetic beauty industry, and the most tried and true that has hardly ever been recognized, glycerin. Say it with me, glycerin. Glistening, glycerin, glistening, glycerin. I love it. Why the hell do I love it? Because it deserves our love, unlike hyaluronic acid, which honestly, I'm not shaming hyaluronic acid. There's a lot of merit to hyaluronic acid. It just has been way, way, way blown out of proportion, um, given its limited ability to actually be a good humectant. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, pause this video. Take a step back, scroll down below, and go watch my video that I did a few weeks ago on hyaluronic acid. It is an ingredient that has been touted to have amazing miraculous claims that quite frankly, I have never really been that impressed by. Do I use it as an injectable? Absolutely, I do. I love it as an injectable. I think it can work wonders for an aging face to a certain extent. However, topically, it's a different ball game and it doesn't work quite the same way. So I think we need to take a step back and understand why I'm obsessed with glycerin and what it can do for you, plus the products that it is contained in. So let's jump in. There are three main types of moisturizers in the skincare industry. I'm gonna break it down very simply because I think there is beauty in simplicity and that is how I understand things. There are humectants, humid. They like water, okay? They're water grubbing whores. And that is what glycerin is, as is hyaluronic acid, but the two are not created equal. Then there are emollients, things that, that have oils in them to basically fill in the rough patches of your skin so your skin feels smooth. And then we have occlusives, okay? The thing that seals the skin in, those are usually waxy, thicker, much oilier substances that do not allow the water to evaporate off your skin so it locks in your trans epidermal water loss and I just hurt my left hand. I'm so sorry. Okay. What exactly then is glycerin? Glycerin is a humectant. Like I said, it's a water loving whore, but it is a tried and true. It is a workhorse of an ingredient. Glycerin always shows up to do what it has to do. It would most definitely be the Pisces in your life. Basically a sign that I am reading from Elite Daily, very, very scientific. This sign is another water-loving, selfless sign, as is this ingredient, that goes above and beyond for those close to us. They cannot help but give to others because they care so deeply for you. It is technically an odorless, colorless, viscous liquid, hygroscopic in nature. What does hygroscopic mean? It means it attracts water and it holds on to it in a good way. And where it attracts water from is super important, which we'll get into in a second. However, it also has other benefits. It has antimicrobial properties. It also has antiviral properties. To the point where the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, if you don't know what that is, not the other three letter worded group that has no significance in my book, approves its products for wounds and burns. It's June, 2021. Wedding season is upon us. Do you know how many patients I've had come in with forehead burns from their curling irons? You need to look for scar creams with a base in glycerin. And one of my favorite ones is actually this one, Cicatricure from Walgreens. I just bought this actually across the street to show you guys. It is a glycerin based scar cream that can actually help your scars heal faster. Or another kind of miraculous unicorn that doesn't have glycerin though is Biofin. Love biofin. Love it, love it, love it for burns over cicatric or even though that one has glycerin in it. I would use biofin if my burn was really bad with an antimicrobial ointment like nuparacin. You have to get that as a prescription. 
not Neosporin. Anyway, I digress. So, um, yeah, it has other benefits and merits other than the fact that it helps keep your skin feeling supple and hydrated. It also is one of the best, if not most effective humectants on the market according to a 2016 study, which I will link below, okay? Um, typically, it's used in concentrations of 5% or less. You can actually have much less than that for it to actually be effective. And it's more often than not combined with other ingredients because it helps the other ingredients work better. You're never gonna find a glycerin serum the same way you'd find hyaluronic acid ampules. It's because hyaluronic acid has been so overly marketed that people are riding the wave of hyaluronic acid and creating ampules specifically with it when in fact you don't need it because like we discovered, it's pretty much in every single product. Why physiologically I think glycerin is superior to hyaluronic acid and it comes down to the 500 Dalton rule. The skin nerds out there know what I'm talking about. If you're new to this channel, buckle up, get your pens and papers out, put on your nerd glasses and start writing. The 500 Dalton rule is a rule. Like any rule, there are exceptions to the rule. And obviously this is a broad generalization and it doesn't mean that everything holds true to this rule. And that's the beauty in science because there are always exceptions. But as a rule of thumb, I think it's a good one to follow. And what exactly then is the 500 Dalton rule? It basically means that any ingredient that has a molecular weight of less than 500 Daltons has a better ability to cross the skin barrier and get absorbed deeper. And that is why glycerin is superior because glycerin's molecular weight is approximately 92 Daltons. Hyaluronic acid is always larger than 500 Daltons. Even the super duper 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 duper, duper low molecular weight HA that brands host and boast and boast about is probably around 50,000 Daltons, maybe even 10,000 Daltons. Definitely way more than 500 Daltons, approximately 100 times more than 500 Daltons. So HA, although a good humectant in the sense that it attracts water and holds on to it, does not have the capacity to get deeper than the most superficial layers of your skin. It usually hangs out on the top layers of your skin, drawing water from its closest surrounding, the skin cells, and then drying out. In the process, dehydrating your skin. Glycerin is 92 Daltons. She's a skinny little bitch, all right? She is a skinny little bitch. And because she's a skinny little bitch, she can wedge her little way down below, going deeper in to your dermis, where the blood supply is, getting water from the blood supply, not dehydrating your body in the process, because let's get real, this is like three and a half percent of your body surface area, and basically plumping in the process, making your skin much more hydrated and supple. And that is why, my friends, glycerin has a special place in this not so cold heart. And <laughs> I just made that up. Um, and I will say the other reason why I prefer it to low molecular weight HA is because of the inflammatory properties of low molecular weight, weight HA, which I, which I spoke about a few weeks ago. <laughs> Duh. So glycerin is my special baby. I love it. It slows down water loss from the skin with an excellent balance of skin penetration and retention characteristics in your dermis, even in situations where there's low water activity in the environment, meaning in your skin or in the environment, which otherwise would have dehydrated your skin. And that is quoted from a study from the European Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences, volume 50, issue 50, 18th of December, 2013. All right, I really miss my Wolverton because I would have done a lot of smacking today. Okay, so that's the benefits of glycerin and that's why I like it. Ooh. So let's jump into product recommendations, shall we? Talk about Cicatricure, Cicatricure, however you want to say it. I love Biafine, but that doesn't have glycerin in it, but it is chef's kiss if you have a burn from a hair roller, especially if your wedding's coming up in two months. But let me go down from category starting with cleansers. Starting with my most favorite, Vani Cream. This is a glycerin-based cleanser. I would pump it for you, but then I'd have to go clean my hand. Um, it has a really cheap nozzle because it's super cheap. Ooh, 
But yep, that's fatty cream. Which leads me actually to some of the negatives of glycerin. Glycerins can sometimes be a little tacky and sticky. And that's why formulation above everything else is key because you want to make sure you're formulating it in the sweet spot where it's not too tacky or sticky. Um, how am I going to do this? Please hold. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back with an old sock because I had no Kleenex around. Okay, I'll put that in the wash. Um, Eco friendly. Okay, so that is a um, cleanser that I love that is glycerin based. I interviewed on One Night Stand on Instagram. One Night Stand is a series I do with Pillow Talk during where I interview people in the beauty industry. A fellow named Jordan Pestiti, who has Jordan Samuel skin, and we talked about my disdain for hyaluronic acid. And he assured me that his cleanser does not have it. And so I've tried it over the past year. It is a Jordan Samuel matinee gel cleanser, and I love it. It's really lightweight, it's really easy, and it goes on very nicely as well. So that's another cleanser. So those are two cleansers that I think you guys could use. Glytone has a mild cream cleanser as well. It's a little bit pricier, but it's also glycerin based. But these three products are what I would start off with. I think Vanna Cream being the easiest, cheapest, most effective one that you can get at your drugstore. No joke for like eight bucks at most. Moving on from that, we have exfoliating acids. And I wanna show you guys what I mean by tacky. So this is something I am working on, okay? This is a product that I'm working on and I'm keeping the name covered um, because we like surprises in life. I wanna show you guys. This is it, ooh, okay. But do you see that tackiness? It makes it have a long play time, meaning when you put it on, you can actually put it on to cover, that little drop covers this whole surface area, which is great because then your product goes a long way. But it can leave a little bit of a tacky feel. Um, if you don't love that, then you, it can be a little problematic for you. I'm still working on this formulation. It's definitely not the final formulation, but I wanted to show you guys because that was my feedback to my chemist that it's too tacky and it was because of the glycerin content. So formulation again is key. Another hydrating serum that I like that is glycerin based is this one by Aven. Um, I spoke about it last week. It's a very nice, lightweight, hydrating serum. My hands are going to be softer than a baby's butt by the end of this. Um, the problem with it, it has fragrance a little bit like rose water, so I would be a little bit flowery. I'd be a little bit careful. The third one that I love, or I don't even know what number I'm at, is the, you know, the gel oat serum. This is just chef's kiss in my book but again the tackiness you guys can see um it just glides and this is what i mean by the plate time again look it keeps going keeps going from here to here beautiful um so those are hydrating serums the aven and the avino calm and restore that basically are very gentle they don't have any other actives now if you're looking for actives that have that are glycerin based without sodium hyaluronate I'm gonna go through a few right now. Now, when it comes to hyaluronic acid, if you limit it to a single step within your skincare routine, you're fine if it's in there. But I don't think you need a whole dedicated hyaluronic acid serum on top of everything else because it will dehydrate you in the process. So, starting from some drug uh, store buys. Number seven has glycolic acid, I believe at 15%. Um, it is extremely spreadable. Look at this. Like, and I think it's because it has high glycerin content. Um, the formulation's a little tacky. If you are somebody with oily skin, you're not gonna love this. But if you have dry skin, I think this will be one that you find will spread and kind of really go in a lot deeper. Um, only use this at night because you're exfoliating with glycolic acid. We spoke about a few weeks ago, um, niacinamide, SkinCeuticals. And this one, particularly by SkinCeuticals, yes, it's expensive, does not have sodium hyaluronate in it, does not have hyaluronic acid. It is glycerin based as well. And finally, Rock. I actually just discovered this today when I went to the drugstore to look for active serums that are glycerin based without um, hyaluronic acid. Um, is has a vitamin C, ascorbic acid serum. It's nice. The negatives are that it smells like oranges and I don't care for the fragrance, but if you can get past that, it's not a bad um, vitamin C serum, at least based on my first instincts and impressions. So these are all actives that, have, that are glycerin based without any hyaluronic acid in the formulation. Um, so moving on now to moisturizers, obviously I'm gonna pop up the Avino Calm and Restore. It's a tried and true. 
The Cycloplast, the Bone B5 that I use in the winter time is also glycerin based and does not have hyaluronic acid in it. And then I discovered, which I actually really am starting to like, is La Roche-Posay's Tolerian Double Repair Face Moisturizer with SPF 30. This baby is glycerin based. This baby is a chemical, quote unquote, sunscreen that does not leave a white cast and that is super hydrating. It goes really nicely on. It's really elegantly formulated. It has no scent. At least I don't think it has a fragrance. I need to just double check. Don't quote me on that. I believe it's fragrance free, um, but it is really nice. And I really actually like this particular sunscreen. So those are sunscreens slash moisturizers that you can use that are glycerin based. And finally, let's talk about body. Two things, hand creams. The Norwegian hand cream by Neutrogena is a super thick hand cream. If you have really dry hands, this is great. You can use it on the rest of your body, but it's extremely, extremely thick. I also love O'Keeffe's working hands. This is just like amazing and a miracle in a tube um, when it comes to hydrating chapped hands and the rest of your body if you really need it to. But I do use this baby on my babies, the Avena Eczema Therapy. It is similar to the other two that I showed you guys. It is a oat-based moisturizer that is glycerin-based without any sort of hyaluronic acid. Love it. And last, a body cream that has an active that's glycerin-based is amlactin. If you have ingrown hairs, if you have keratosis pilaris, if you have any sort of discoloration on your lower legs or body from a cut, a burn, a fall, etc., this can be good in the long run as it will help to exfoliate your skin, but just make sure if you're wearing shorts or a skirt or at the beach, you're wearing sunscreen because lactic acid can make you more sun sensitive. <gasps> so those are all my products. I just took, I feel like a massive <clears throat> on this Saturday morning but I feel a weight has been lifted off of my chest. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope I didn't speak too fast. Guys, I'm trying to make sure the closed captioning is on in every video, so please make sure and let me know below because some of my videos show closed captioning, but I've heard from some of you guys that you don't see it there, but please let me know. And yeah, I hope this was beneficial and helpful and educational all in one, as well as slightly entertaining. Um, maybe, maybe not. All right. I am Dr. Shereen Idris signing off and I will see you guys here next week. Let me know below what you guys want to learn about next. Have a great Saturday and weekend.